These are the 10 solutions you'll be using for your lab. The first thing you should do is go through and identify the formulas for all of these solutions. The first test you're going to do is called a conductivity tester. Go ahead and use a well plate for this. I know the red's kind of hard to see, sorry about that. And it needs an L. Go ahead and use a well plate for the tester. Your tester will look just like this one. I caution you for the tester to read the back of the tester so that you know what the light means. So read the back of the tester. Now once you find the solution that does not have ions, go ahead and dump it down the drain. You won't need this solution again. For extra credit points, tell me why. Before you do the lab, tell me why. The second test you'll do is the acid-base test using a universal indicator. There's only two colors you're really going to be looking for, red and purple. Any of these colors in between won't really tell you anything. So you could, you know, who cares about these? For the purposes of this lab, it does not matter. You're only looking for your acids and the one base that you have. The blue solution that you have, if you put the indicator in it, will turn red. It is not an acid. So don't even bother testing the blue solution. I'll tell you right now, the blue solution is a neutral solution. Take a look at the list that you had. You only have one base. So what is the name of that one base out of your nine remaining solutions? Go ahead and label that and set it aside. You will need it. Absolutely, you will need this. At this point, you should have identified three different acids. Which of these three can you identify by its odor? For extra credit, before the lab, tell me which one you can identify by its odor. You can go ahead and dump this one down the drain. You won't need it again. Why not? At this time, you will not be able to differentiate the two remaining acids. Those two remaining acids, one might be more red than the other. Does the more red, do you think, indicate that it is the strong acid or the weak acid? Or does the more red mean something else? It would be good for you to think about this and answer that question prior to doing the lab. Of the remaining solutions, you need to now write down all of your possible net ionic equations. So there's your remaining solutions. Now to write the nets, what you need to do is first, let's start with potassium nitrate. You're going to write a dissociation reaction. Basically, break apart the potassium nitrate. Now, will either of these ions create a precipitate with any of the other ions in the list? If the answer is yes, which one? And write a net. If the answer is no, move on to the next one. Let's take a look now at sulfuric acid. Let's write the dissociation reaction for sulfuric acid, like I just did for you. Now ask yourself, will either of these ions create a precipitate with any of the other ions in the list? So take a look at your solubility rules, find sulfate, and who does sulfate make a uh, precipitate with? Well, whomever that is, you're going to write the cation with its charge plus sulfate yields your metal sulfate. Starting with the sodium hydroxide, you want to ask yourself, what are the two possible cations you can identify using the hydroxide ion? See, you know where the hydroxide is, and you know what two things make a hydroxide, make a precipitate with the hydroxide. So the, look at your net ionic equations. What are the two cations you can identify? If we take the hydroxide ion and we mix it with all of our remaining solutions, we know that silver will give us a precipitate. And we know that copper will also give a precipitate. So when you mix sodium hydroxide with all of your remaining solutions, you will make two precipitates. 
Examine your net ionic equations again. You know that in those two containers you have either silver ions or copper ions. How can you use your two acids to determine which cation is silver? Well, if we take sulfate, and I know you don't know which one's sulfate, and you mix it with silver, do you make a precipitate? What about if you mix copper with sulfate? Does it make a precipitate? using chlorine because you know that these are the two acids, the one with the chlorine ion and the one with the sulfate ion. I know you don't know which is which, but look at what happens if you mix both of those acids with both of the test tubes that contain silver and copper. How can you use this information to figure out which cation is silver and which cation is copper? Let's recap where we are so far. You've already determined that you have two acids. You're not sure which is which, but that's okay. So we've got sulfuric and ammonium chloride set off to the side. We know those are our acids. We know sodium hydroxide. We know where that one is. It's identified, no big deal. Copper 2 nitrate, you should now know which one that is. And silver nitrate, you know where that one is. How can you use silver nitrate to help you identify which of these three remaining solutions is what? If you take the silver nitrate, because you know where that one is, and you mix it with the nitrate ion, what happens? What about if you take the silver ion and mix it with the chloride ion? What happens there? Using what you already know and your solubility rules, you can now figure out which is potassium nitrate, which is barium nitrate, and you can now figure out which acid is sulfuric acid and which acid is ammonium chloride. Your lab write-up is due on Friday.